cardiac rehab is broken down into three phases. Phase 1, inpatient cardiac rehab. Phase 2, outpatient cardiac rehab. And phase 3, community-based cardiac rehab. Sometimes there's a phase 4 too, but we'll talk about that later. Phase 1 begins as soon as a patient is stabilized in the hospital after, say, being in the emergency room or the cardiac unit after admission for a cardiac event. Common conditions include myocardial infarction, coronary artery disease requiring medical intervention, congestive heart failure or CHF, congenital heart diseases, arrhythmias, and other cardiomyopathies. The role of OT in rehab includes education, monitoring of symptoms, and the progression of activities such as ADLs. Before working with patients, OTs perform a careful chart review, understand the contraindications, and precautions when working with this population. In general, parameters to be cognizant of include heart rate, such as not going over 100 beats per minute at rest, blood pressure, and MET values. Just as you would in acute care, it is important to monitor chief complaints, symptoms, and vital signs. Some signs and symptoms to watch out for include angina or chest pain, excessive fatigue, dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting, dyspnea, pain, diaphoresis or sweating, unsteady gait, and confusion. Some patients may be on oxygen therapy, such as through a nasal cannula at, say, anywhere from 1 to 5 liters of oxygen. A good tool to use is a pulse oximeter to measure oxygen saturation. OTs may also educate patients on the use of the incentive spirometer, or IS, to improve lung cardiopulmonary function. Self-monitoring of symptoms should be taught early on as well. The goal is to get patients onto no oxygen at all, also known as room air. OTs may base activity tolerance on metabolic equivalent levels and measure exertion with patient-reported scales, such as the Borg RPE, or the Rated Perceived Exertion Scale. Here is the RPE scale just for reference. OTs play a role in educating about activity restrictions and permitted activities within recommended MET levels. MET levels in Phase 1 typically begin at METs 1 to 2, and isometric activities are avoided. OTs also help with developing a comprehensive home program that may include energy conservation techniques, stress management, using a compensatory adaptive versus remedial approach, precautions such as sternal precautions, and guidelines for activities such as sexual activities and sports. The cardiopulmonary system works hand in hand, so some education may include improved posture, such as when ambulating, using pursed lip or diaphragmatic breathing. A good ratio for pursed lip breathing is the 1 to 2 ratio, or one inhalation to double the duration of exhalation. OTs also support the team to help the patient make good lifestyle choices, such as minimizing controllable risk factors that include poor diet, alcohol, smoking, and being sedentary. Edema, such as pitting edema, may occur in conditions such as CHF. OT treatment may include elevation, use of pressure garments, ankle pumps, dietary changes, and retrograde massage. Psychosocial factors to address include anxiety, depression, loss of control, and emotional irritability. As always, discharge planning should be considered early on to promote a smooth transition into the next phase of cardiac rehabilitation. One indicator for going to phase two is when patients can complete 3.5 METs for activities and can therefore begin MET levels four to five in phase two of cardiac rehab. In outpatient phase two of cardiac rehab, OTs often see patients for about three days a week for four to eight weeks. The focus is on exercise and activity tolerance and exercises are graded based on appropriate MET levels. Weight training can also begin in this phase. The goal is to reach METs 5 to 6, but this is highly dependent on the individual. Other areas to address include modifiable risk factors and referring to work hardening if indicated. Psychosocial factors and vocational status are addressed to maximize participation and as it is important to determine and prescribe the appropriate level of exercise and activity. 
that met levels can be a useful guide for this as well. In phase three of community cardiac rehab by a physician's referral, the patient continues to exercise and progress their activities in a group setting. A stress test is usually performed beforehand and proceeding at this stage. Examples of this setting include community centers and gyms. This is typically not covered by insurance though. Goals include improving the cardiopulmonary system, such as with weight training and exercise for the body, including the upper and lower extremity. Sometimes you may hear of a phase four, which is called long-term management. And this includes long-term maintenance for physical conditioning and psychosocial support. Examples include cardiac support groups, workshops, and leisurely social outings. 